disciples did. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. Stop there real quick. What was going on? Well, the Pharisees there in Judea, Jesus was there with his disciples. It was John the Baptist, remember we talked about, and Jesus, they're both baptizing. And the Pharisees who lived in Judea were kind of trying to start this rift between John the Baptist and Jesus. And Jesus says, I see your plan, man. I'm going to head back to Galilee, which was a little bit more of a Gentile area. But if you can picture on a map that Judea was in the south and, and, uh, and Galilee was up to the north, Samaria was right on the way, right between Judea and Galilee. So you had Samaria right here. Here's the thing, though. Most Jews, when they would head towards Galilee, they would go nine miles out of their way to miss Samaria. They would go completely out of their way. Why? They were racist. They hated the Samaritans. They looked down on the Samaritans. They looked at them as just dirt. And here's the reason why. They called them half-breeds. All the Samaritans, they called them half-breeds. Because in 722 BC, the Assyrians came into Israel, conquered them, and all their people came and intermarried with the Israelites, which God said, don't intermarry. I want to keep this line pure. And so the full breeds, these the full Jews, would look at them and go, mm, I'm not down with that. But Jesus said, I need to go through Samaria. There's a woman in there that's dying of thirst. And I have the key. I have the living water. I'm going to go, I'm going to break all those barriers down, these social, these racial type divides. I'm going to go straight through Samaria. I have someone that's on my heart that I'm going to visit. I love that because you know what? The fact of the matter is Jesus, he's the hound from heaven. You ever, you ever heard that? You know, like a, he's, he's just sniffing you out. Some of you guys in here, maybe you came for the first time, or how did I get here? Uh, who, who is this crazy bald dude with big ears just talking right now? Listen now, it's no mistake that some of you guys are here. You have a hound from heaven that loves you, and he's continuing to search after you. In my life, he was searching, he was sniffing me out for years and years and years, and I was kicking that little dog out the door. Get out of here, I don't want to deal with you anymore. But he's adamant, he's coming after and that's what Jesus was. He was the hound from heaven. He was sniffing out this woman in a sinful behavior, but he loved her. He wanted to extend that grace her way. Verse 5. So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, or Shechem. You can write that down as well. Near the plot of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being weary. You can circle that. He was wearied from his journey. He sat down thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour, or it was about high noon. Pause well, right there. I like that. What does that say to you and I? Jesus was fully God, yeah, but he was fully human. He voluntarily took on the limitations of man so he could relate to you and I. We have a God who loves you and I and has, has connected, has put on skin. We've talked about it in John 1. Jesus is God with skin on. Hebrews 4 and 15 for you note takers. Check this out. We don't have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses, but was at all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 5 2, right after that. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Listen, he can identify with you. I mean, it's a pretty good jaunt going right to Samaria, I mean, Holmes' guy's like our cardio on. So he's like, man, I gotta, I gotta sit down and kick it for a little bit. Anybody got some, you know, everybody got some Gatorade? There's a well right here. Let's stop and, and, and see what we, what we can get accomplished. Verse 7. Now, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Which was odd, because when, why would women come at the hottest part of the day? Interesting. We'll find out more in a second. So she came to draw water. What does Jesus say? Hey, you know, can you hook me up with a little drink, please? For his disciples went, they had gone already by, to the city to buy some food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Pause right there. What is that? Jesus is bucking. Talk about bucking the system. He gets a double whammy. Not only is she a Samaritan, but she's a woman. 
And that culture of the, of the, the Pharisees, they would teach, you don't even greet a woman. It was a completely different society. Jesus says, I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one contact with this woman. I'm going to go into her world and completely rock the whole system. I love it. Galatians 3.28 says this, guys. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you all are one in Christ Jesus. No more of this, I can't relate to them. I can't relate to them. I want to see a church full of all different economic backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, with one focus, one goal in mind. What is that? Jesus. We're, we're coming together. And he's showing that. He's, he's going right into this and in bucking the entire system here. Look at verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink. You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you don't have anything to draw with, and, you're, and the well's deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, and I want you to underline this, because this is the focal point of the Bible study. Whoever, and don't worry about it, God won't be mad if you write in the Bible. Okay, we can skip past that. Let's go ahead and underline. Whoever drinks of this water, and I, in, my, in my Bible I kind of circled this water. Whoever drinks of this water will never will thirst again. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. <laughs> Pause right there. Whoever drinks of this water, if I, ha if I just had this, if I could just do this, then I'd be satisfied. What is it for you? What is it if I could just make this amount of money? If I could just move up the corporate ladder right here, if I could just have this other house, this other car, then I'd be satisfied. Listen, Jesus says right here, whoever drinks of that water, listen, you will thirst again. I think it's funny because growing up as a kid, it starts early. If I could just have that bicycle right there, dude, I'll never have to ask for another thing again. I'll be completely cool, right? And by God's grace, you get it for Christmas? Yeah, dude, all right. I Man, I'm cool. Everything's cool. Then what happens? If you're me, you get an accident. Next thing you know, the frame's bent in half. Or you say, well, this is kind of cool, but a year from, year, you know, a year later at Christmas, dude, you know, you know, Jimmy down the street had a mom goose. Now you have a mini goose. He's got a mom goose. Oh. Well, now if I could just have a mon man goose, we could be okay. Listen, I don't care what it is for you guys. Success, athletics, status, you'll run dry. Eventually you will run dry. And I experienced that personally. We also know another guy, and want you make your way to Ecclesiastes 2. I want to just kind of show you a few points of this man right here, a wise guy. In fact, his name's King Solomon, who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. Obviously, God through King Solomon. But this guy, King Solomon, was, the Bible says, the wisest guy to ever live, ever. And God used him to pen three books. One of them is, is the Song of Solomon. When he was a young guy, and he was just getting married, and it's a very romantic book, great book for you newlyweds. Man, hit that up. It's just some passionate stuff, man. Get that thing... Maybe old dudes too. Maybe you stir up some of that old stuff back up. Um, great book. Then he goes into the middle part of his life and, and God uses him to pen a book of Proverbs, which we talk about reading the proverb of the day. Great nuggets of wisdom and insight that he learned that God blessed him with to be able to give to you and I. And then finally he ends with this book, Ecclesiastes, because Solomon started out the right way. He had God, but he's like, man, God's just not enough. God's not getting it for me i got to go outside of God and see if I can have some more stuff. And the Bible says that, that Solomon, and we'll get into it right here, had whatever he wanted. He was wise.